Hi, everyone, and welcome to this session on human-like reasoning for an AI. My name is Craig Saunders. I'm a director of machine learning in the Alexa AI organization. Hi, uh, I'm Devish Pandey, a principal product manager in the Alexa AI group, along with Craig. Let's jump right in. The most important question always to ask for any initiative is, why are we doing it? We're not doing it for the sake of doing it. We want, at Amazon, with every step we take, we want to make our customer experiences better. Customer obsession is for the core leadership principles at Amazon, and we are always trying to see what will it take to make the customers happy and to make their lives more delightful. One of the key elements of that for a voice assistant is the shared understanding, a shared context where the assistant and you know we are talking about the same thing so that you can move, make progress faster. We can talk about the things much more efficient and a more natural pace. I know we talked about several things, but nothing clears things up like few examples. Let's take three separate examples to bring home the point on what we mean for the need for reasoning. First, what will the weather be for the concert this weekend? At the surface of it, it looks like a straightforward request where the customer is looking for weather. But if we dive deep further, we realize they're asking for a particular concert. Which one is it could be inferred from their from a few places. One, they might have talked in the previous utterance where they might have said, hey, is, where's the, what is, at what time is the utterance, uh, what time is the cons concert by X? The second could be the calendar. They might have made a calendar entry for it that I need to be at this concert in this location at this time. And the last one could be they might actually have purchased the tickets from Alexa with one of our many skills which allow customers to do that. Once we've understood the date and time from a various variety of sources, we can tell the weather, and that should be straightforward. We tell requests around weather for customers all across the globe. But one critical aspect to understand is what is the customer's goal in itself? Why did they ask for weather? And there can be a few reasons. The first one and the most obvious one is they might be deciding what to wear. Uh, is it going to be bright and sunny? Uh, or is it going to be probably chilly and you need a jacket on? That could be one. Uh, and, but if you knew if the concert was indoors, is it really the right question to ask? The right question to be asking might be, they're deciding how should they travel? Should they take their car? Or can they take the public transport like the subway and walk for 15 minutes? They probably can't do it. They don't want to do it if it's raining. So you see how a simple example like weather could mean a wide variety of things. Let's take another example, which is not about weather, but it's about a customer's request around, it's a bit dark in here. Now, that has a lot of shared context. It could be because of very many reasons. One, the customer might have just woken up. Uh, they're just, their eyes are just adjusting to the new scenario. They might have walked in from right outdoors. The second could be they might would want Alexa to turn on the lights, but it's not just all lights, just probably the lights in their one particular room they're in, maybe their living room, maybe their bedroom, but we need to be very considerate about what we turn on. And the third is the time of day. As our customers have more and more smart home devices, they might also have smart blinds. Alexa does not necessarily need to turn on the light. She can also turn on the blinds. It will get you bright sunlight inside and solves the problem, which was it's a bit dark in here. So again, there are a multitude of options depending on context and all where we think reasoning could potentially help. Let's take either one. Set a reminder for three minutes. Now, if the customer sets a reminder for three minutes, it can be due to a wide variety of reasons. One, it could be for brewing coffee or something they want to answer to in three minutes, but if we could infer from brewing coffee that they're in kitchen, one of the things often people need to do is take out their trash. That's a really good time to remind them you potentially want to take out the trash, but that's not, that requires a reasonable understanding of, one, they are in the kitchen, two, they need to set, uh, they need to, it probably can be done in three minutes. It's not a, some, uh, an event which will take like 10 or 15 minutes of your time. Now. The last one could currently be solved by setting a reminder at the set date and time, but you're not always in the kitchen. 
Maybe uh, you are just in your living room and it reminds you to take the trash. That's not ideal. Your reasoning can help in reminding at the exact moment when the customer might find the most utility out of it. Now we've talked about the why. Let's talk about what is reasoning, because there's a wide variety of things which we could potentially mean by reasoning. I wanted uh, us to have a shared understanding in this session what comprises reasoning. We believe reasoning enables Alexa to compose knowledge, context, skills, actions, and user inputs to deliver customer utility. Now, let's unpack each one of them. Knowledge. One is the knowledge of the world. Things like, what's the latest sports news? Things like COVID. Context. Context is everything we believe Alexa should be aware of in terms of the smart home devices, in terms of what are the capabilities of those devices, whether they are turned on, turned off, what are all the devices linked to Alexa. Skills. We have over 100,000 skills on Alexa. What are the ones the customers preferred? What are the ones they've used before? And then the actions, once we have all these actions, what are the, w once we have all these contexts, what are the actions we can take? So can we turn on the blinds? Or are they really supporting Alexa or not? Or can we turn on the lights in the example we used? And all of it is builds upon the user's input uh, to based on the user request. So when I said it's dark in here, it could have mean, meant a variety of things, but we decided that it probably meant to get more brightness in that particular example could have meant something very different if we were currently looking to reorganize your whole room and you were trying to see, hey, what kind of a sofa should I have or what kind of side tables should I have? Dark in that context would have meant very different than in this particular context. So we have decided why we have talked about the what. Let's talk about what do we need to succeed. There are three elements we need. One. What do we know and what might happen? So we have this entire world knowledge which uh, gives us probably a lot of inference about things. So when a user says a request like, can Seahawks make the Super Bowl? Or can Seahawks make the playoff? We know they're talking about NFL. They did not tell us, but Seahawks gives us that reference. So we have that world knowledge to relate to. The second is also on the context like, the capabilities of the devices, the state of the smart home devices. And that are the things we already know, and we know what we can potentially do with them. The light, we can turn on and off. Maybe we can even dim the lights if that, that is supported. The second part of it is what can we assume based on experience. So here in the, when we looked at the particular sports example, we, can, we, already, we could potentially learn about the rules of the game. We know the standings, we know the schedules, and we know what are the possible combinations of that. So we can potentially assume what are the possible outcomes because they are a listed set of either a draw, win, or a loss for the particular teams. And based on that, we can make those particular deductions. And the most important thing is, why are we doing this? What is the customer's goal? In each of these examples, it's super critical to identify them. And for the examples we previously discussed, as, you, uh, as we talked about it, you might have noticed that it's dark in here means a lot of things. The weather's, why did the customer ask for weather could mean they're deciding the mode of transportation or they're deciding what to wear. It's a super difficult problem to solve to truly understand what the customer means when they make the particular request because people are different and they try to do the things differently. For us, it turns down to, from an ML and AI standpoint, it turns down to be three different problems. One is understanding the user's goal. What are they trying to do? Secondly, trying to understand what we can potentially infer from the information of the world knowledge we have. And the last one is, how can we personalize it through either self-learning over the cohort or through the teachings the user might have already told Alexa, like, I could have personally set up a routine or taught Alexa that when I say it's dark in here, just turn on my living room light. With those three elements which we need for reasoning uh, over, I want to hand it over to Craig to show why is it difficult at scale. Exactly, thanks, Devesh. So you're going to see a lot of repetition in some of the examples we show you because uh, a lot of reasoning already exists. 
in Alexa in research today. I mean, the device already reasons to answer questions. It does reasoning which skill to choose. So there's a lot already present. But if you want to think about the future and our vision of having Alexa as an ambient intelligence, it's there whenever you need it. It provides utility, and it fades into the background when you don't. We have to solve some of these problems at scale. And I wanted to call out three particular areas that we'll reinforce with some walkthroughs later. The first is multiple signals. So customers are having more and more devices in their home. We're getting more signals around context. If people share their calendars with us, they share their device location. So these signals are increasing over time. And if you think of a particular narrow focus or a narrow application, multiple signals often are a great help. There's more features. You can be more accurate in the actions you take. But actually, multiple signals imply another level of reasoning. Which signals are appropriate at this time that relate to the user goal um, that lets us carry on? So here's an example. If I say, Alexa, I can't hear the TV. Alexa might know the volume of your TV. It might know the music's playing. It probably also knows that your outside porch light is on. But that light has no impact on whether you can hear the TV or not. It might know that you've run out of milk in your fridge. Again, that's a signal that it, it needs to effectively ignore uh, in this context. The other challenge we have is that there's ever-changing world knowledge. Um, I used to do a lot of work in the question answering domain for Alexa, and this is brought home to us every single day, just how fast the world changes. From obvious things such as new vocabulary, COVID, Omicron provides challenges for automatic speech recognition. These are new words in our vocabulary. Just through to the fact the world changes constantly. And as humans, we assume a lot of world context when we speak to each other. A uh, classic example here is asking, what was the score in the hockey game last night? Maybe you're an NHL fan. You're asking about that. Maybe the Winter Olympics are currently on. And now you're asking about the national team. Or maybe the Summer Olympics are on, and you're talking about field hockey. Um, it's amazing how the world knowledge, we just assume there's a fundamental set of things that the person in front of us knows. And we assume that of our uh, Alexa and assistants as well. And the third one is an increasing number of potential actions. And again, this is going to increase as we get more and more smart devices in our homes. So going back to that, Alexa, I can't hear the TV. The correct action might be to turn up the volume. Or it might be the TV is already loud, but you have a smart music speaker somewhere that you left playing. And what you actually mean is, can you turn the music off? Uh, and Alexa needs to employ reasoning to figure this out. Uh, in that situation, it's not helpful for the TV for Alexa to reorder your milk because you've run out. That might be useful in another context, but it doesn't help you here. So out of all these actions, we have to use reasoning to know which one to take. So these are some of the challenges that I really want you to keep in mind. Uh, because they really do become evident when we consider reasoning at scale. So let's really dive into this and just take a really seemingly simple example and say, what would it take to make this work everywhere for anyone in any situation? So remind me when it's Craig's talk. It's all about me, right? So when you want to come to my talk, I need to set a reminder. Well, first of all, I didn't actually specify the event at Remars. And again, if you want Alexa to be ever present, to have this ambient intelligence, our first challenge is knowing all of the events in the world, because that's necessary to make this work at scale. So to do that, well, we have to extract data. We have to find information on all these events. These can come in various formats. We might have some tabular data. We might have some structured data based on the, what the event is providing. We may have to read some text do some web scraping. So there's an extraction part that lets us build a knowledge graph for which we know all of the events, all of the times, and all of the schedules. And here, already, we're using state-of-the-art pipeline, state-of-the-art machine learning, transfer models to do the extraction. We're also using reasoning quite heavy in here, and I'll expand on that later. You want to know that the data is accurate and up-to-date. For example, there are many web pages that state Barack Obama is president of the United States. There may be structured data sources that state the same thing. And you can use reasoning against the knowledge we have to know that that information is out of date. So that's the first part. Great, we've got all the events. We know everything. So 
Now I have to connect this sentence to the specific event Remars, and I have to connect Craig's talk to this actual session. So here's this, there's two challenges. So the first is the event. As Devesh explained, there's lots of signals potentially here. Potentially you bought tickets for Remars. You might have a calendar entry. You may have given us permission to access that. Or there are other clues from the device. Perhaps you asked your assistant, hey, is there a poker game at ARIA today? That kind of places you in the vicinity of this, this conference, so we know that you're talking yeah. about Remars. We then have to connect talk. So I think of this as a talk. Some people may call it a presentation. In the schedule, it's called a session. So we have to learn and reason that in this context, talk means session. And again, we can do that through reasoning in, in a variety of ways. Perhaps Alexa self-learns by paraphrasing. Perhaps there's been another event where someone said, remind me where there's a talk. Alexa said, I don't know. And the user paraphrased and said, OK, remind me when there's this session. And Alexa can learn that talk and session are equivalent in this context. This is present in Alexa today. In fact, one of the first examples of this was a user asking to play the ABC song. Alexa said, sorry, I don't know. And the user rephrased and said, Alexa, play the alphabet song. And now you know that those two things are the same. Or we can use external cues, such as large language models. A lot of these large language models, they contain affinity matrices, and talk and session may be close in there. In these cases, it tends to be a signal. It's not reliable to use as definitive truth at scale. OK, so we've now linked these things. Awesome. But we've still got work to do. So remind me, well, when? 10 seconds before the talk starts? Two weeks? What's that time that's useful for you to remind you? And again, there's two main sources here. One is personal information, your preference settings. We may decide on an action for dialogue. How long before should I remind you? That action is useful, but it kind of gets annoying if we ask every single time you want a reminder for a session. So again, we have the reason. Is this action going to give us information? Is it going to be useful for the user? Or we can learn from cohorts. So other people may have set calendar settings, reminders, and we know that maybe 20 minutes is a good time to remind you, so I can just take the action. And think of things, again, we're talking of scale. So think of things like, remind me when it's tax day, or remind me when it's the Super Bowl. You might want a 15-minute, two-hour reminder for the Super Bowl. For tax day, you might want a week. And again, we have to try and use reasoning to do that. So already this really seemingly simple example takes quite a lot of effort to get to be useful at scale. And we're not done. So. I don't want that reminder to live in isolation. I want my assistant to continue to provide utility for me. So if I say, hey, book lunch at the Bellagio for four people, well, maybe this talk moved up to one. And there, I would like Alexa to say, well, I know how long lunch takes. I know how far the Bellagio is away from where you're trying to attend the session. You're not going to make it. And again, that's reasoning providing extra utility for the user. So this is the kind of things that we really want to solve at scale and provide to our customers. So what does it take to do this? Um, sometimes when I talk to people, either people who are, aren't fully aware of AI and ML, or even people in the field, there's a picture of it's just one mega module that does this. In practice, we have to invent across many, many different areas. Um, I picked a few here. This slide could have been extremely, extremely long. But to, just to give you an some insight into where our researchers are inventing today and where I see excitement. One is something called end-to-end -end learning paradigms. So typically, let's say you're doing reasoning for question answering. You have lots of different machine learning models in that chain. You learn how to understand users. You learn how to do entity resolution. Classic example here is when was Titanic released? We know hundreds of films and books about the Titanic. But most people in this room are thinking of the film with Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. So you need to reason a little bit there. Through to actually executing the query on the graph, how many hops does it take, getting the answer, and then responding. Now there are these end-to-end -end paradigms where it's not a sequence of models changed together. You start with the user utterance, and it learns. It learns how to do the ER step. It learns how to infer over a graph in an end-to-end -end scenario. There's lots of work in goal inference, planning, and explanation. 
as Devesh hinted, uh, inferring what the task actually is or what the goal actually is, is incredibly difficult. So there's lots of these around self-learning, zero-shot, few-shot learning to do this. Again, you can't prescribe it at scale. Um, we can't predict the future. Users can do anything they like. We need to be able to handle that. And then there's the final part, reasoning. We actually have to explain to the user that we took the action. We actually have to explain to the user that we understood them. This is where voice at scale is super, super interesting for me. You get very few f bits of feedback. So if an assistant just says yes, they may have done exactly what you asked, but it doesn't give you confidence that uh, Alexa understood you. So we have to work out how do we explain to the user in a succinct way that gives them confidence. We understood their request, and we took the right action. So there's a, a lot of research in this area. I think now is a, is a really exciting time, because we're starting to see surprising results from reasoning systems that are able to do this over larger corpora. There's still a lot of invention to do in each of these areas. And then we have to combine these into a system that provides the utility we want. And if you want to know more of the research in this area, you can have a look at Amazon.Science. So I hand back to Devesh to tell you a bit about what's upcoming and where Alexa's going. Uh, so as you might have figured out till now, there's a long road ahead for us for reasoning. We've been doing it for a while, but we also want customers to feel the impact of the innovations the team has been driving across the board. We'll walk through three examples which show uh, what we, what's upcoming and what's coming soon to their customers. Let's do the first one, multi-hop reasoning. Alexa has Norway won more skiing medals than Austria. Now, on the surface of it, it's just a simple question of, hey, what's the skiing tally like? But as you try to unpack it, you realize that there's more to that question. The first one is, we're talking about the Winter Olympics. The user never mentioned it. And that's something we have to infer because they are skiing and then there's medals. And that's probably, the Winter Olympics is probably one of the first places to look for that. The second part of it is, are they talking about it cumulatively since the Winter Olympics started in 1924? Or do they want about the current Winter Olympics? And that is critical depending on when the customer asked for it. If they asked for it while the Olympics are going, they probably mean that's that's current Olympics. But if they asked with when the Olympics was years away, they probably want an accumul uh, accumulated uh, medal summary. The second one is to understand what is skiing. There's no particular sport as skiing for, for the Winter Olympics. Instead, they come in a wide variety of names. Some of them have skiing in the name, like the cross-country skiing. Some as the biathlon, which do not have skiing in the name. So Alexa needs to understand that skiing means these wide variety of games in the Winter Olympics. The third part of it is just simply retrieving the information on what was the medal tally for each one of them. Now, it seems simple, but we said about medals, but ideally they are not, they are either positions one, two, three, or the medal type, school, silver, bronze. So we are supposed to combine all of them aggregate it over the period of time and across those two countries, and then answer the question. And the answer can be simply yes, because the question was, has Norway won more skiing medals than Austria? But we know the customers are not satisfied just by a yes. It will be more delightful if we answer and explain yes. Norway has won 305 medals in skiing, which is 121 more than Austria. And now the customer has a lot more confidence into the answer Alexa provided to them. Let's take a different example, which we're also working on coming soon for you, is around ambiguity resolution. Simple thing, turn on the light. You see in this slide, uh, the kids are playing with the dog, and somebody, uh, there's a smart home, uh, a smart speaker there, and the customer requests, turn on the light, a speech recognition engines, do multiple predictions of it, and the most probable response for them is turn on the light, and they think that's what the customer meant. We send it through a reasoning engine, and we realize, hey, the device is already on. If Alexa had that context, and of course, the normal human behavior is if the lights are already on, people don't re specifically request to turn them on again. 
if we had that context of the device state, we would actually turn off the light and recover from the error where the second probable response is the right one in this context, because we know it's a noise, noisy surrounding, the dog might have barked, the kids might have said something loud, which made it really hard for our speech recognition to get the right answer. This is possible because we had the context of the device state, whether it was turned on or turned off. Let's look at another example. Here, there's no noise. The customer made a clear request, dim the lights. Now, as we, got absolutely, uh, we are absolutely sure what the customer request is, but we realize there is no lights as such. Uh, there are multiple smart home lights, uh, but the customer's only one of those devices, the bedroom really supports the dimming feature. And what the customer really meant was turn, dim the bedroom lights. We could always go back and clarify from the customer, hey, did you mean bedroom lights? But ideally, if we know the device capability, we should just, given that context, we should just dim the bedroom lights because all of the lights are simply turned on and off. And the customer request is very clear that they want to dim the lights. Here, the context was not the device state, but the device capability. We'll go through one more example, and I'll let Craig walk through it because of his love for <laughs> a Formula One fan, so thank you. So the, other, the third thing that we're working on, and you'll see uh, Alexa start to be able to do this, is considering future possibilities. So I'm a Formula One fan, like I said, so I might ask, can Leclerc win the Formula One World Championship if Verstappen wins the next race? Or more likely, can Leclerc win the championship or win if Verstappen wins the next race? But in this case, the resolution part is actually relatively simple. Leclerc and Verstappen are two names that probably don't occur into a, any other context. Perhaps they're playing a charity golf tournament together and I need next race to ground it to the Formula One Championship, but let's assume that's easy. So what I do is I resolve things like Leclerc to the actual Formula One driver, Charles, Charles Leclerc, the entity in our knowledge graph. I do the same with Verstappen. And there I can unpack what the user asked. When they're saying can, they mean is it possible for, and when they say Formula One World Championship, even this is ambiguous. There's a driver's championship and a constructor one. But because I've resolved Leclerc and Verstappen to Formula One drivers, I know they're talking about the driver's championship. And by win, what do I actually mean? I mean, have they have the most points in the driver's championship at the end of the current season of Formula One if Verstappen gains 25 points in the next race in Austria? So I've already put in knowledge about the next race and the number of points that they get. So then once I have unpacked all this, I then actually have to retrieve and plan and find the goal. So I know what Leclerc's points are after the next race. It's a minimum of 126. I know Verstappen, who's currently leading. He has a minimum of 200. And then I can work out how many points are available. And now I know the answer. It is possible. So then comes the final step. Well, I have to explain it back to the user. And already, we've discussed yes is not a great answer. It's not satisfying for the user. So we could and should unpack that to something like this. But then we've still got another decision to make. Does the user actually want more detail? Do they want more detail in response? And again, that's something we can use reasoning to learn from experience. Do users prefer short answers? Do they prefer long answers? Um, and I'm not going to walk through this here. But if you really wanted to do this at scale, we have to make a good distinction between possibility and probability. This was a fairly straightforward example. But you can imagine scenarios where it's actually possible. Yes, he can win if he wins all of the other races of the season and the other driver crashes out in the next 10. Mathematically, that's possible, but it's extremely unlikely. So how do we learn? How do we reason over that and give a different response to the user? and even give different intonation in the way we, we say it. So those three things, multi, increased multi-hop reasoning, increased ambiguity resolution, and considering future possibilities are the next parts on our journey to this that you'll start seeing from Alexa in future. So with that, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.